Hi everyone, welcome back to B17 The Mighty Eighth. Here we are, just about to start a new campaign. A new campaign to get 10 flyboys to complete their 25 missions, to complete their tour of duty and give them the ability to go home, get out of this war. Go and sell some war bonds over in the States and live a life of uh, fame and fortune for a few few months, a few years, who knows. But to get there, there's 25 arduous missions to complete first. So we start on the 1st of May 1944. We're here based at Ridgewell Airfield. We're part of the 381st Bomb Group and the 533rd Squadron. So let's go in and meet our new crew and our new bomber. Okay, so as you know, we had a bit of a vote and the winner of the competition was C Cup. C Cup will be the bomber we'll be taking out for the next few missions. Um, first of all, let's start off with the Bombardier, uh, Foster Graves, second lieutenant. Um, gunnery is average, piloting is below average, bombing is average, hopefully we'll get that up pretty quick. Navigation is below average, technical and first aid are average. Hello Foster, nice to meet you. Um, then we've got second lieutenant Robert Culver, he's our navigator. Gunnery is below average, piloting is poor, bomb aiming is below average, navigation is average, which is honestly, they're just kicking anyone out of these training schools these days. Um, first aid is average and technical is below average. Captain and pilot will be Marty Copeland. He's married, as the captains tend to be, um, for some reason, I don't know why. Gunnery is below average, piloting is average, need to get that up for sure. Bomb aiming is poor, navigation below average, first aid below average, technical average. Co-pilot, second lieutenant Martin Roth, he's married as well, which is, uh, makes a nice change. Uh, gunnery is below average, piloting is average, bombing is n poor, navigation first aid are below average, and technical skill is average. Now, Peter Shu. He's our technical sergeant. He is uh, our engineer and top tier turret gunner. Gunnery is above average, which is good. Piloting is poor, but he's got the skill. Bombing is... He doesn't have that skill. Navigation is poor. First aid and technical is above average. So he is actually quite a good all-rounder. They always say the engineer was probably one of the most respected um, crew members. And you can see why. He's, um, he's fairly competent. Gunnery, first aid and technical. Straight out of technical school, which would be... Uh, pretty good. Our radio up, technical sergeant Xavier Scott. Um, gunnery is average, piloting is none, bomb aiming and navigation are poor, first aid is above average, just got himself a job there, and technical is average. So our bull turret gunner, Cole Roberts, um, average gunnery, no piloting, bomb aiming or navigation skill. First aid is average, technical is poor. So technical is like, you know, making repairs, repairing guns, the speed at which they can do that, putting out fires, lowering the bomb bay door if it's damaged, or lowering the undercarriage if that's damaged as well. Those are the things you can use which determine the speed and the ability to be able to do those kind of tasks. Um, then we come to Staff Sergeant uh, Robert Berger, left waist gunner, average gunnery. No pilot bombing or navigation skill and below average first aid and technical. On the right waist, we have Eustace Howe. Um, gunnery is average, piloting, bomb aiming, navigation, no skill. First aid, below average, technical, below average. And that leaves, finally, on the tail, a determined-looking young man, Tony Wilson. Um, single. I I'm I'm, don't know why that's not a surprise. Uh, gunnery is average, piloting, bomb aiming, and navigation is none. First aid, average technical below average so yeah he's um so he's 31 that's quite old for um one of these boys really isn't it 31 yeah but there we go a bit of experience on the tail which hopefully will um prove its its measure a bit of you know confidence that little bit of more assurity you know he doesn't mind being right at the back of the plane on his own he'll be okay there so We've met the crew, let's go and meet the bomber.
And here she is, C-Cup. Um, looking a little bit worn. And the old paint, she's not a brand new one from the factory as you might ex expect. Um, looks like we've got a bit of a second-hand jobby here. But that's okay. We're flying in the colours and delivery of the uh, f uh, 533 and the 381st. Um, yes, looking good. Looking good. We all look forward to... Um, seeing some bombs and some crosses being painted onto this uh, aircraft for sure. But there we are, you've met the crew, now you've seen the aircraft. There's only one more thing to do on the 1st of May 1944, is to go find out where our first mission will be. And in the briefing room we come. Here we go. So the 1st of May 1944, the Hildy Oil Production or Hildy Oil Production Facility is the primary target. The secondary is the Merkwiller oil production facility, and the tertiary target is the oil, uh, so the Euro tank oil refinery and storage. Ordnance selected will be six times five hundred pound general purpose and twelve times one hundred pound incendiaries. Distance to farthest target is eleven hundred and ninety nine miles. Fighter escort will be two squadrons of P thirty eights, and we can have a read on the primary target. The Hildy Hailed Oil Production Facility. Flak strength is high, fight strength is moderate, priority is very high, damage none. Merc Wheeler, flak strength is moderate, fighter strength is moderate, priority is high, damage none. And the Euro tank, flak strength is high, fight strength is moderate, priority is very high, damage none. So we'll sign our life away there. For a quick look at the routes that they've planned for us. So heading northeast over the Dutch islands. Well, it doesn't look a terrible plan, actually. They haven't got us traipsing through all the flak fields through Europe to get there. So we're coming in up north. Um, we've got the Eurotank and we've got the Merquilla there. Well, we've got the primary over here. So, yeah, I suppose that's a good distance if the weather's not good at one of those. But it's May. The weather in May should be reasonable, I sh you would predict. Um... We've got Kiel here. Obviously, lots of submarine activity around Kiel. Um, I'm wondering if we do go for the primary, we might extend that run and then cut down south here. Just avoid the flak around Kiel. Hit that and maybe head further. Ooh, see, this is a tricky one. Do you head further south and run into these three air bases here? Or do you try and cut that short and maybe cut. I mean, that's going to be a bit tight turn. Cut away to try and get away from. Um, the potential of enemy aircraft, but still lots of flak fields around. Um, so you, obviously we've got three airfields which are definitely going to send aircraft up, but you're more likely this one's likely going to send one up. This one might. These two might as well. That one may, but it's probably not going to be uh, close enough. And we just tidy that up going around there. They've got the altitude set at 15,000. I'll raise that. I'll raise that, I think. Don't fancy going at 15,000 to what will be quite a um, uh, well-defended um, targets over Hamburg and uh, the one over here near um, is that Lübeck? Lübeck, yeah. So yeah, we'll um, we'll both tinker on that depending on which target we're going to go for. Having said that, let's take a reconnaissance look at the film for the primary target. So it seems to be out on its own in the countryside, which is good. Saves um, damaging any residential areas, which you can see sort of a few fields away. Cooling towers stand out, and you've got all the pipe works and the usual storage tanks and stuff. So, yeah, there's a few houses and buildings either side of it, but not too bad if any bombs go astray. Right, deep breath, let's head to the aircraft and get this uh, campaign underway. Start engines. Master switch. On. Cow flaps. Open left, open right. Ignition to both. Mixture auto rich. So the pilot and the co pilot will go through the startup Booster sequence. Pumps. We'll get these On. engines fired up, warmed up, and we'll start taxiing towards. The runway. Meshing. Master switch. On. Ignition to 
boat. You are cleared for takeoff. Okay, and we have formed up and we're heading out to Target. English coast just below us there. As we're heading out, it's uh, just coming up to half past eight in the morning, just coming past 15,000 feet. Speed 150 heading 070. Here she is, Seacup, leading the flight. And who have we got on our wing? Let's go and have a look, shall we? So today on our port wing, we've got first mate. Coming out, all rookie crews it would seem today, until they gain a little bit more experience. And on our starboard side we've got Killing Time. Lovely. So, a um, couple of good crews on either side, let's hope. And uh, we're going to start heading out to target now, and hopefully we'll skirt around a lot of the flak and fighters until we are ready to do the decision point, choose the target which we're going to go to, as you say, the cloud looks relatively light from this side, but um, you never know what it's like a few hundred miles away, so we'll see how it goes and get the uh, weather forecast when able. Zero, four. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. We are making the turn. This is the decision point, actually, so um, no problems at all as we've blown up the coast. But now is the time we need to find out where exactly we're going to bomb. How's the primary target looking? Weather at primary target is believed to be fair looking with fine. more tense cloud at approximately 9,000 feet. So I think with that weather forecast, the uh, primary target is still very much on. Weather at secondary target is believed to be fair with 5 tenths cloud at approximately 9,000 feet. Now the secondary and tertiary are quite close to each other. So I'm expecting quite similar. Weather at tertiary uh, target is believed to be fair with three tenths cloud at approximately 9,000 feet. So there we have it. Um, the tertiary target has the slightly better weather forecast. They're all much to muchness to be fair. But um, the primary with four tenths cloud is absolutely fine. We can certainly go for that. I'm not worried too much. So we're going to stay on target primary. And then we'll see if the navigator can make the route a little bit more congenial to staying alive. Okay, Keel is down there near the waterline. If you can look through the clouds, it's actually got a little bit cloudy here now. Oh, here we go. Here's that flak I was hoping to avoid. We have to fly through it now. Because once you've made the decision, no further deviation is allowed, it would seem. Our little friends flying over, keeping out of the flat, don't blame them. Um, it's, it's reasonably thick here, but it's not. I don't want to curse it and say it's not terribly accurate. And get the end of the body. I knew it. As soon as I said that, we we're going to take a strike, and we did. It looks like that was around the, um, the waste gunning section. It's doing okay, though. Actually, it was the tail gunner. Tail gunner got spooked. Oh yeah, came in there. 
may have nicked his arm. He may be um, have a bit of a, a wound, but he doesn't know about it yet. He may come back to bite us later. Is that it? Is that Keel's best? Well, we all seem to have got through that okay, which is good news. And we have a fire in the tail. That's obviously set something a burning. Tony can um, slide himself out of there and get that fire put out. Fire! Nice. Okay. Good stuff. First little drama dealt with. Okay, coming up to the waypoint now, this is the initial point, so we'll do our turn, steady out the aircraft, switch it over to autopilot and hand it over to the bombardier. Pilot, navigator, at the waypoint. We are on the bomb run. Okay, up in the nose. Let's wait for the aircraft to settle down. It is quite cloudy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this, I think this is just a high layer of cloud which should, well, we should pass over in the next few minutes, so that should be okay. Oh, we're still waiting for the aircraft to level out. Ooh, steady on there. It's a bit turbulent up here, perhaps. Right. Let's have a look. Can we pick out the target? I think he's done a assumption of where he thinks it might be. It looks right because you've got the road there and the countries, the fields before the town. So I think this is the target here. So I think he's just just shot over it, but that's okay. Well, um, wait till we get over this cloud, and then we'll start doing some um, calculations and uh, configuration to get us locked on. Yeah, perfect. Right. So it looks like the, the target stretches from left to right rather than forward to back. So um, with that in mind, so let's do a short drop. Oh, got to take control. A short drop. Those bombs dropping quickly. Um, and let's get this set smack bang in the middle because we're going to have an aircraft on either side of us bombing so we probably want to be about there in that lighter area which is probably going to be where the pipe work is it's not going to be where the cooling towers are so if we lock on there the cooling towers should pop up on this side and the storage rack should pop up down here and we should have all the pipelines and stuff between them but what we need to do is bomb there so the aircraft on our right will bomb this side and the aircraft on our left will bomb that side. What we do need to do is actually come a little bit further actually in the middle. Both horizontally and vertically. There we go. It would be better if we were bombing from left to right to be honest, or right to left. But we'll, we'll do with what we can. We look fairly stable. Tiny bit of drift, I'll just adjust for. I hope that's enough. Here comes the flak. So we've got the, this this is the drift indicator, so I can I can hold down the N key and, and use my joystick to try and affect the drift a little bit. So go back and correct that now. <laughs> Bombing from 26,000 feet today. 
half from the 16 or uh, 15,000 that they recommended. You know, we'll go a little bit higher. God, one of our little friends got blown up by the flak, did it? Did you hear that boom? Good God. It's one of the things, you know, sometimes it's, it's hor horrendous what you can't see because you've got to do your job. That's, that's, the, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Stay focused, do your job. I'm going to actually tweak that a little bit more. It's not quite where I want it. Better. We'll lose it just in the cloud. One's away. Can't be sure. Final correction seems to maybe go slightly astray. Yeah, the bombs. And here's the target. Look, there's two smoking heaps in the distance. Maybe two of the little friends came together. But anyway, this is the target. Here come the shadows over. Oh, we're long. We're long. We're just blowing up this residential area over here. Oh, we were long. Well, my bombs would have dropped in this sector because they were all dropped quickly, but the others carpet bombed, and look, all straight over the river and into the fields. Well, that is going to be a near miss. That is not a great start to our bombing career. Well, we've, uh, I suppose we've hit the target at least. There's certainly a cooling tank and oil storage tanks which are out of action, and oil burning, which will burn for days, but um, not brilliant. Okay, meanwhile, the flak is pretty thick. Let's um, make some evasive maneuvers. And by evasive maneuvers, I mean let's change our height. Let's, um. Man the guns, enemy aircraft coming in. Oh, they seem to come up like a rocket ship from below. And I think that. And the two remaining little friends have just left us as well. Isn't that isn't that typical? And we're descending now, and the flak stopped. We just seem to be slightly off our game today. Our bombing run wasn't particularly brilliant. Um, as soon as our little friends seem to have collided, and the, the two remaining have gone home, and in that moment, the enemy make their attack. No idea where they are. I can't see them at all. Call out them fighters if you see them. Pilot, navigator. Okay, turn coming up. Pilot, navigator. Two, heading. Two, four, nine. Repeat. Two, four. Okay, this is that rather tight turn Roger. we're going to make. Part one. Hopefully, no one was damaged from that flak, and we should be okay. Oh, somebody was damaged down there. Oh, this is scary. This is very scary. Oh, this is no aircraft collision. Good shooting, killing time. Did you? That was killing time's gunner. Good God, that was amazing. That was spectacular. I've never seen anything quite like that. On the turn, she absolutely blew her out of the water. Five o'clock high. I see him. Oh, the, these gunners are. Oh, beautiful shooting guys. There's three shot down straight away. We did lose two bombers then, which was disheartening. I think they were from the other squadron. 
Still, doesn't make a difference. That's still 20 guys. Bandit, 4 o'clock, level. Bandit, incoming. 8, low. Got him. Oh, loads of aircraft coming in. Got a big chunk of him. Where are they? Four o'clock low, right. You see the target just about burning over there. Roger. Level. Oh, I see him. Kind of see him coming in. Oh, it's so tricky. Got some hits on him. Calling out when you're doing these turns. It's next to him. Oh, hello. A little bit close. Oh, now we're, now we're going the other way. Oh, hey. Oh, my God. This is terrifying. This is terrifying. Right. Calm down, everyone. Well done. Enemy aircraft coming in. Can't actually see where he is now. There he is. Good hits on him. Bandit, six o'clock low, coming in. Can't Bandit, see him. Four o'clock, level. And they love that four o'clock. Oh, he's coming for us. Got him. Smoking anyway, lightly smoking. All of a sudden, it's gone incredibly quiet. No call outs. Where did all those fighters go? Oh, yeah. That's gotta hurt. Oh, one's just gone in. All gone quiet. I see him. Guns, guns are jammed. Bandits, incoming. Eight level. Bandits, incoming. Eight low. Bandits, coming in. Seven o'clock low. Guns are working again. Of course, she weren't able to uh, have a shot at any of the others. That first one we got smoking. Four o'clock low. Smoking bomber down there, and the bomber which could be in trouble. He's lost yet yeah, number two engine. Oh yeah, he's lost number two engine and number one engine by it's bit. Oh no. Exploding around us. Pilot, navigator. Okay, we're coming up. Always worrying me. The explosions, you can't see them. I think we still. Landed, nine level, inbound. Landed, nine level, inbound. See ya. Oh, we got some lightnings. Clipped him. Those lightnings have come back, which is nice to see. Pilot, navigate. Two, seven, seven. I fear one of those bangers could have been that distressed bomber we saw leaving the formation moments ago. He's gone outside my visual range now. Can't see him. One coming in at six. 
hits on him. He's leaking fuel by looks of it, and we've got a bomber struggling there. If we can just get away from outside their range, we can start dropping down to a lower altitude, and that bomber may be able to stay with us. Still got our wind with us. Nine low. Seems to be coming in in the opposite direction. Coming through that cloud. No eyes yet. Coming in. Seven oh. oh. And he's, d he's down. Let's see if we can get one of the waste gunners just to patch him up. I'm going. And not going to do, we'll use the top turret to um, cover the, the rear for the moment. One o'clock low coming in. Okay, sounds like tail's back up. I see him. Boys, he's smart from acrobatics. Get him, boys. Got lightning, well, overshooting. All things seem to have calmed down for the moment, so we're going to um, continue to head out now. You've got to see the Dutch Highlands there. We're going to do a turn and head down that way back to Blighty, leaving this behind us. And hopefully, all these guys will be uh, with us in the end. So, a few gaps in the old squad, uh, squadron formation there. Hi, everyone, welcome back. Right, we've done a bit of flying, uh, it's just coming quarter past one in the afternoon. We're down to 15,000 feet now, heading 252. As you can see the bomber down there with the uh, smoky number one engine is still with us and the rest of the aircraft, the six up there are still with us and uh, four over here are still with us. So yeah, we're um, doing well as you can see. This is uh, north of Summit, this is East Anglia. We're back over British land, almost, pretty much there. So now all the matter of course is um, flying into Ridgewell, orbiting and um, bringing these aircraft home safely to complete our first mission. Funny mission really. Nothing until we got, well, we had to do that weird flyover of Kiel, which we didn't really want to do. Uh, then we had a not the best opening bombing sequence and um, yeah, tried to do some minor adjustments at the end when the cloud was coming in and obviously that set off my judgement a little bit and uh, we just, it, I think it'll go down as a near miss. Uh, we damaged some of the buildings on the uh, top of the target but um, the bombs ran on into the uh, countryside and into some uh, housing as well. Uh, and from there we were getting pummeled by the flak. During that two of our little friends seem to have collided or been taken out by flak. I'm not quite sure what happened. We were on the bomb run so we couldn't get visuals. Um, so that was a bit of a disaster, down to two escorting fighters um, and as soon as we started to make some altitude changes for the uh, flak, um, the flak stopped and all hell broke loose. I think about two or three, I think, I think there was three flights of aircraft came in and um, hit us hard. We lost two bombers in a tight turn, thanks, they obviously had damage from the flak. That was a mid-air collision, and we've seen a bomber take um, damage on his number one and number two engines being out and having to drop down below the clouds. Did the fighters follow them down and finish them off? We won't know, but um, I'm not hopeful that that bomber will return. Uh, we managed to kill a few aircraft. Pretty sure we'll get credit for a few. Uh, we've come through it, and uh, hopefully, it's just a matter of getting home now. Make our uh, 
final approach. Which one's gone a bit smoky. Clearly we did take a little bit of damage then. If engine one is um, just starting to suffer. Nothing uh, too bad, it's obviously still operational and still producing power. Oh, that was heavy, wasn't it? Good strong undercarriage on this one. C cup is down. And that is her completion. Mission number one. Yes, it's so average piloting, so um, I'll blame the pilot for that one. But I can't really blame the pilot and the bombardier for having off days. It's clearly a common denominator there somewhere. Welcome to debriefing. The tone of the music doesn't suggest this is going to be happy reading. 1st of May, 1944. The Hilde oil production facility was attacked, distance flown 1193 miles, bombers lost, missing two. Oh, okay. So that bomber we saw dive along under the clouds with two engines out, presumably made it back. Enemy fighter shot down 10. That's not bad. And as I predicted, it was classed as a near miss. Um, oh, Staff Sergeant Wilson, who is our tail gunner? He actually had a severe wound, so that, that shrapnel from the, the flak, which we had early on. Although he continued, he did go down at one point, didn't he? Um, loss of blood. He obviously was a lot worse than we than we had um, previously thought. There you go, there's the close cluster of, I guess, our bombs, or the bombs which hit the target, and um, the ones that just sort of ran off into the housing, into the fields. It's it's a it's it's okay. It's a starting point. We've got lots of improvements to make, and uh, we can go from there for no no worries at all. Um, so here's the commanding officer's summary. No promotions have been awarded. Medals awarded: Staff Sergeant Wilson, our tail gunner, Purple Heart, and also the Medal of Honor. Wow, he must have shot down quite a few aircraft, and he put out the fire as well, didn't he? So we all got credit for that as well. Missing crews accounted for. Guardian Angel crashed in enemy territory. Sadly, all aboard were lost, and Chowhound also crashed. There were the two that collided, uh, and all aboard were sadly lost. I'm not surprised with the um, with the nature of that accident. Uh, do you want to look at the post reconnaissance mission? It's not going to be too great a viewing, but it, for once we did actually attack the target that they filmed so it might be worth it. You can see the bomb, the end of the bomb craters here coming through these this row of housing. These are probably um, houses for the workers of the oil um, plant so you know we might have got rid of some of the workers anyway. See some damage to one of the cooling towers and these storage tanks there. The fires seem to be out though. So, mission one down and dusted though. Um, let's have a read of the crew information file after mission number one. Foster Graves, um, our bombardier, no improvement in his bombing. Well, I'm not surprised after that to be fair. Um, he did okay, nothing too exciting to report. Our navigator, Robert, no improvements there, not that you'd expect to after mission one. Um, Marty, his um, piloting is still average. Just yeah, I was going to say, despite the heavy um, landing, but that probably wouldn't have helped at all. Um, above average for ah, hang on, Martin Roth. Above average. I when I was flying the aircraft, maybe I was as Marty then, because he was average piloting. I think you can look back at the start of the video to find out if I'm right. But um, he may have improved his piloting a little bit. Um, Peter Shu, our top turret gunner, he's got good gunnery now. Nothing to his name. Xavier Scott, our uh, radio operator, his stats look the same. Obviously, he completed the mission. Robert Coles, bull turret gunner, 
It seems about the stats about the same. Um, Robert Berger, about the same, I think. Don't think you notice. Uh, Eustace Howe, our right waist. Again, <laughs> it looks the same. And uh, post vacant for our tail gunner, of course, because he's been injured with a severe wound. How long will he be out for? Um, his gunnery hasn't improved, which is sad. Medal of Honor, Hild Oil Production Facility. Um, sustained on the 1st of May. Oh, tw three weeks he's going to be out. Three weeks he's going to return to the aircraft, which is good. Have a quick look at the actual aircraft accreditation. We got seven of those ten aircraft kills, which is good to good to uh, see. I'm delighted with that. Uh, mechanical status, we're A, despite the, the slight damage we had to the aircraft and the smoking of one engine at the end. Um, wow. So Technical Sergeant Shu, our top turret gunner, he shot down a 109. But Wilson shot, that shot down six aircraft on the tail. He's an ace in one mission. How about that? And straight away he gets a severe wound and we're not going to see him for the next three weeks. We might be dead by the time Wilson comes out of, um, <laughs> out of the infirmary. But there we go. Fantastic. No wonder he got the Medal of Honor. Six aircraft kills on the tail. I'm delighted with that. And Technical Sergeant Shu also got one kill. And that's maybe why his gunnery's gone up to good. So maybe when Wilson comes out of um, the hospital, his, his stats may have may update and he may get better gunnery because with six kills you'd have expected his gunnery skill to uh, have um, leveled up a little bit. Going outside to inspect the bomber. Well, C cup looks reasonably okay. A little bit of tattiness around the tail here where we've got the strikes from the flak and maybe the fighters. Oh yes, quite a few holes here. Um, a bit of a flak here. This is where the tail gunner was injured, of course. There we go. They'll patch that up and she'll be ready to go again next time when we'll have one yellow bomb indicator and seven black crosses indicating our success to date. So yeah, we'll be um, getting this aircraft ready and we'll be going up for another mission next time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying this. I'll see you next time for the uh, mission number two of the Bomber Sea Cup.